Okay, now it's time to integrate some trig functions. So we're integrating cos 5x. So uh, just working this out from scratch, what kind of thing do we know that will differentiate to give a cos? Well, we could guess that y equals cos of some, or even sine of something, even better. Okay, sine of what? Well, to get cos of 5x, I'm going to need to start with um, uh, sine of 5x. So if I differentiate my guess, if I get dy by dx, then I know how to differentiate this. Um, we get we get sine differentiates to cos, so we do get cos of 5x, but because of the 5x, we get a 5 popping out. Okay, uh, Use the chain rule if you have to, but use the rule for differentiating um, sine of constant times x. So we get 5 times cos of 5x, but I want the integral of cos of 5x is the thing that differentiates to just give, give cos of 5x without this 5 here. So my corrected y, what do I need to stop that 5 appearing? The answer is my corrected y uh, is the sine of 5x with a 1 fifth in front of it so that that 5 doesn't appear. So therefore the answer is a fifth sine of 5x plus c. Okay, um, now that's fine, working it out from first principles, but uh, let's actually think about how we can memorize this. We know that, okay, here's a diagram you can use to help you with differentiation and integration. We know that if we start with a sine, okay, sine of x differentiates to cos of x, so that arrow means differentiates to, and cos of x differentiates, differentiates to minus sine of x. So actually, if I keep going around here, then this is minus sine of x. And if I differentiate minus sine of x, well, if sine of x differentiates to cos of x, then minus sine of x differentiates to minus cos of x. And minus cos of x will differentiate to sine x to complete the cycle. Okay, so that's the differentiation cycle. So differentiation is when we go clockwise around this diagram. But if I'm integrating, all I need to do is go the opposite way around. So we've just seen here, when we integrated a uh, cos, that was the rule for integrating sine, but backwards. So we integrate plus cos, we get plus sine. And all of the other stages in this diagram will work as well. So these red arrows, if I integrate a sine, I'm going to get a minus cos. If I integrate a minus cos, I'm going to get a minus sine. And if I integrate a minus sine, I'm going to get a plus cos. So this little diagram here, just to get yourself started, you just need to know that sine differentiates to cos. And then you can complete the rest of the diagram. And then the integration arrows just go the other way. Okay, all right, and the other thing that's happening here is that we've got a linear function, in this case just 5x inside our cos. So if we just integrate a cos, well the diagram tells us that the red arrow, the arrow a cos, integrates to a sine. So I've integrated um, a cos to get a sine, but linear function 5x, a one-fifth pops out. So that same pattern with linear functions as we noticed for um, uh, previous sections, E's and brackets to powers, that rule carries on working. So, uh, hopefully a little bit quicker, we're now integrating a sine. So, uh, what does sine integrate to? Well, the diagram says that if I start with a sine, the red arrow takes me to a minus cos when I'm in, uh, uh, integrating instead of differentiating. So the answer is going to have a uh, minus. This two, I'm not going to, I'm just going to write down. Um, cos um, sine turns into a cos when we integrate, or minus cos when I've got the minus. And inside the cos, I'm going to have 7x minus 2. Uh, but what will pop out? Well, the linear function, it is a linear function, which is why I'm allowed to do this, is 7x minus 2, which differentiates to 7. The number in front of the x is 7. So that means 1 seventh is going to pop out, and I need a plus c on the end, so the answer is minus 2 sevenths cos of 7x minus 2 plus c. Okay? And then this last one, okay. All right, now this is uh, sec squared of 3x, all right. So do I know anything? So this, I can't use uh, the rule for sine or cos for this. Do I know something that differentiates to sec squared of x? Well, you should do, okay. You should remember that tan of x differentiated to that. But you should also remember that ta differentiating tan x uh, was in your formula book. So uh, as a reminder, Okay, if you have, if you're differentiating any of these things, but tan of kx is the first and most useful one, it tells you that a tan differentiates to a sec squared. Okay, but you haven't just got um, a differentiation section in your formula book, you've also got an integration section. And 
there are some very exotic ones that they start off with. You might conceivably have to use one of the first two, but uh, if we get down to here, we get the easiest one of all. Integrating sec squared of kx is 1 over k tan of kx. So it's, you can see the linear function rule is going on. We've got a k in front of the x, so our 1 over k is popping out. Okay, But this particular one, if I just know that sec squared of kx integrates to 1 over k tan of kx, for the one that we were doing, we've just got sec squared of 3x. Okay, And so the rule from the formula book tells us that that's going to be tan of 3x with a 1 over 3 popping out in front of it. And all I've got to do now is put in the limits uh, pi by 4 down here and pi by 3 up here. So I've got to do put the top limit in first, a third tan of 3 times pi by 3 minus 1 third tan of uh, 3 times pi by 4. Okay, Now these actually end up, bo both of these being very nice angles. 3 times pi by 3 is pi, the equivalent of 180 degrees, which, is actually, which actually has a tan of 0. And this one here, a third tan of 3 pi by 4, okay, um, is the same actually, that the, the, the um, the tan of 3 pi by 4 is the same as the tan of minus pi by 4 because it's a distance pi away. So this actually is minus a third tan of, pi by, tan of minus pi by 4 is minus 1. And of course you could do this on your calculator. So uh, naught take away minus uh, take away a third times minus 1 is the answer is plus a third. Okay. And remember of course that for any definite integral, which is an integral with limits, we can just use our built-in integration button here. So we have got to integrate. Oh, how am I going to enter sec squared 3x? Well, sec of x is 1 divided by cos of x. So I need cos of 3x. Where's my x button gone there? Um, so the 1 divided by cos x, 3x in a bracket, that's sec x. So I need to do that squared. Okay, so that's my uh, sec, of three, sec squared of 3x. Oh, uh, hang on, what's going wrong? And I haven't put my limits in. And my limits were pi by 4 on the bottom. So this is uh, pi over 4 on the bottom. And my top limit, whoops, my top limit is um, pi uh, over 3. So pi on the top, 3. And now it should accept that. And it gives me the wrong answer. Why does it give me the wrong answer? Because I haven't done what you always must do before using any of these functions, which is check that we are in radians. Okay. Obviously, um, uh, the trig functions do not work in degrees when you're differentiating or integrating. So if I'm now in radians, which I am, and we get the answer of one third, just as we got... Uh, down here. So we've done it right. And the calculator check, uh, especially if you practice it a bit, uh, shouldn't take that long. 0.0001.